Hey guys, Mr. B here, and welcome to the Work and Power Climbing Up the Stairs Virtual Lab. We're gonna be climbing up these stairs. Well, at least I'm not gonna be climbing up the stairs. Isaac's gonna be climbing up the stairs. So, we're gonna be climbing up some stairs, and we're gonna be calculating how much work it takes us to go up the stairs, and how much power we generate doing so. So, let's get started. All right, so in order for us to determine how much work it takes us to go up the stairs, we need to know what is the total distance that we have to go vertically up the staircase, which means that we're gonna to need to measure the height of one stair, and we're gonna to have to see uh, how much that is. So if we look here, we should be able to see that the height of one stair is about 17 centimeters, or maybe 18. Isaac called it a little bit awkward, but I think it's about 18 centimeters. So we're going to record that on our data table and we're going to count how many total stairs we have in order for us to know our total height. So Isaac, how many stairs do we have? Go count those. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Don't worry about the flat part. Keep on going. So eleven stairs. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 22 total stairs. So one stair is 18 centimeters. We got 22 total stairs, which means you gotta do a little bit of math, but I need you to determine now what the total height of this staircase is that we are about to climb. All right, so now Isaac is going to be climbing up these stairs. And in order for us to know how much work it takes Isaac to go up the stairs, Isaac, I know it's a personal question, but we need to know what is your body weight? 125 pounds. All right, now Isaac's body weight is 125 pounds, but unfortunately we need to know what that number is in Newtons. Now I'm not gonna tell you that, but it's your job to calculate his weight from pounds into Newtons, because in order for us to use our work equation, we're gonna need that force in Newtons. So do that calculation real quick, and we'll come back and we'll see Isaac go up these stairs, and we're gonna time him also to generate his power. All right, so Isaac is gonna go up the stairs. We know his force. We know his height he's gonna be traveling. We need to know his time in order for us to calculate the power that he's gonna generate. So I've got my phone here ready to time him and we're gonna get going. So ready, Isaac, get uh, up by the stairs there. And I'm gonna go three, two, one, go. And when I say go, you're gonna climb the stairs. And when you hit the top, I'm gonna hit stop. So three, two, one, go. There he goes, there he goes, look at him go, he's so fast. And time. All right, so his time was 6.48 seconds. I know that's blurry, because my camera does not want to focus on it. There you go, 6.48 seconds. We're gonna record that for our time for Isaac. And we're gonna do some calculations. So, I'll see you in the post lab. Hey guys, Mr. B here. Welcome to the post lab for the virtual lab on walking up the stairs. So um, we're gonna be taking a look at the post lab questions here um, and just doing the calculations and answering those so we can turn this lab in. All right, um, so the first thing is we're gonna take a look at our data and make sure that the numbers we have for the height of the stairs and the time it took Isaac to go up the stairs and his weight are all in the proper units. Um, so the height of one stair was between 17 and 18 centimeters. I think in the video I had it as 17.5. So if we convert that into meters, we should have 0 0.175 meters for one stair. And then the total height of the staircase, we're gonna take that meters, multiply by 22 stairs. So our total height of the staircase was 3.85 meters. The time it took Isaac to go up the stairs um, it was 6.48 seconds when we timed it in person, um, but my phone does time it at 60 frames per second, and um, the video I think was 24 frames per second, so it was 6.17. Either one is fine, but I'm gonna be using 6.48 seconds in our calculations for the post lab questions here, so you can use that number. Um, approximate weight in pounds is 125 pounds. We had to convert that to Newtons though. It does say here that our conversion factor is 4.44 Newtons per one pound. So if we take 125, multiply that by 4.44, we'll see that Isaac is about 555 Newtons. Okay, and that is his force, which we're gonna need to calculate work. So 
calculations here. Question number one, it says, how much work did you do to climb the stairs? Or in this case, how much work did Isaac do to climb the stairs in joules? So first thing we need to know is the equation for work. So work is equal to force times distance. Um, so in this case, our force is going to be new, um, Isaac's body weight in newtons. So 555 newtons multiplied by the distance that he covered vertically, okay, which is only going to be 3.85 meters. Now, I know that the stairs go horizontal or they go diagonal, right? Stairs go this way. But when Isaac is doing work, he's only doing work when he goes vertically, okay? Because his body weight is pulling downwards, which is gravity. In order for him to raise himself up vertically up the stairs, he has to push upwards. So the only time he's doing work that we care about is in the vertical direction. We don't care about the horizontal direction. Okay. So which ways, so even though the stairs are diagonal, we really only care about the vertical aspect, which means that the distance he's traveling is only going to be the vertical height of the stairs. We don't care so much about the sideways part. Okay. So our total distance is going to be 3.85 meters. And then if we do this out on our calculator, um, we get a total of Let's bold this and underline it. 2,136.75 joules of work. Okay, so J is the abbreviation for joules. So 2,136.75 joules of work is how much work Isaac did by going up the stairs. Um, second question here is how much power did you generate or how much power did Isaac generate while climbing the stairs in watts and in horsepower? So first, again, we need to know the equation for power. So power is going to be equal to um, work divided by time, okay? Work divided by time. So in this case, our work um, is from our previous problem we just did, 2,136.75 joules. And the time was 6.48 seconds. Okay, so if we do this math out, um, we will get, so do this, divide by 6.48, um, I get 329.75 um, watts, okay? Um, so this is the main unit for, for power is the watt, but they do want us to also calculate this into horsepower. So we are gonna have to do a little conversion here to get that second one. So for horsepower, um, we're going to take our number of 329.75 watts, and then um, in order for us to convert this into horsepower, we're going to need to multiply it by the conversion factor of one, ho one horsepower over 746 watts. So on the top here, we're going to have one horsepower, and on the bottom, We're gonna have 746 watts. I don't know why this uh, it's not formatting right. There we go, that's what we're looking for. Okay, just like this. That way, of course, watts um, will cancel out with watts and we will get into the units of horsepower. So just a, a basic multiplication problem here. So 329.75 times, I'm sorry, not times, um, divide by, okay, sorry, 329.75 divide by, 746, and I get 0 0.44 uh, HP for horsepower. So it looks like Isaac, ooh, that's not the right thing we're trying to do. Um, Isaac is unfortunately not as powerful as one horse. He's not even as powerful as half of one horse, but that's okay. He wasn't really going that fast or trying too hard in that lab anyway. So, all right. So those are our um, answers for those first two questions. And let's take a look then at the last three. So it says number three, two years from now, if you climbed up the stairs in the same amount of time, but you weighed less than you did now, would you generate more or less power than you did today? All right. So again, we know that I'm just going to actually copy paste this. Um, we know that power is work divided by time. Okay, so this is our equation for power. Work divided by time. Um, we also know that our work is force times distance. So in this scenario, um, if we climb the stairs in the same amount of time, but we weighed less. Okay, so if we weighed less, that means our force is going to be smaller. Okay, so this force, let's do this in black. 
So this would be a smaller amount of force. The distance, of course, is going to be the same because it's the same staircase. So if the force is smaller, that means that our overall amount of work we're going to do will be smaller. Okay, because we have less force times by the same distance, it gives us less work. So if we have less work here, so this is smaller and the time stays the same. Okay, so this is gonna stay the same. So it stays the same. I guess we should probably put over here too that this was the same. So if our work is gonna be less, our time is the same, if we do that division out, ultimately then we are going to generate less power, okay? We're gonna generate less power. So um, let's just write it down here. So we can say the answer here, and that is um, if we weighed less, then our overall force would be smaller, which means that our overall work would be less. If our work is less, but our time remains the same, then our overall power would be less uh, as well, okay? There we go, that is our answer. And uh, hopefully this kind of explains how we get that, so. All right, um, number four. If you climbed up the staircase, if you climbed up a staircase that was double the height of the staircase today, and you took twice as long to climb it, would you generate more or less power than you did in this activity? And would you have done more or less work? All right, so again, we're just gonna copy paste our equations down here so we have them. It's gonna help us to answer these questions. Okay, um, so um, if you climbed up a staircase that was double the height of the staircase today. All right, so the, the height of the stair distance, okay, distance is gonna be doubled, so that's gonna be more. Um, and our force is gonna be the same because we are not, it says we're not gaining or losing weight. So um, we're gonna weigh the same. So our, our, our force is gonna be the same, but our distance is now doubled. So if our distance is doubled, that means that our work is gonna be doubled as well. Okay, so we're gonna be doing double the amount of work. So then over here, this work is gonna be doubled from what it was before, but we're taking twice as long to, to climb the stairs. So the time is also doubled. Um, so would we generate more or less power than we did in this activity? So this is kind of a trick question because if we look at our power equation over here, right? If we double our work and we double our time, then those two things essentially are just gonna like cancel out with each other, in which case the amount of power that we generate would be exactly the same. Um, we wouldn't actually generate any more power than we did before, it'd be the exact same amount of power. So uh, we can basically say if we double our dis if we doubled our distance, we would double our work. But then if we also double our time, then the amount of power that we would generate would be the same uh, would be the same as before. okay? So our, our power is going to be the same because we double our work, we double our time, just kind of cancel each other out. Um, the second part then, of course, is would you have done more or less work? We will have done more work. And we kind of answered that here. We would double our work. So we'd be doing, we would be doing more work in that scenario, but the amount of power we're generating is actually exactly the same. So, all right. Um, last question, number five. Um, if you climbed up the exact same staircase in the exact same amount of time, but you did so on Jupiter, which has much stronger gravity than Earth, would you generate more or less power than you did here on Earth? All right, so let's copy and paste our equations down here one more time. Let's get rid of, of course, all this stuff that we typed in here. Um, all right, so if we climbed the exact same staircase in the exact same amount of time. All right, so the distance that we're covering is gonna be the exact same because the same staircase. And the amount of time that we're doing it in is the exact same because it says so, so that's the same. Um, but we did so on Jupiter, which has stronger gravity than Earth. Okay, so what that is gonna change then is our force. So our force, which is our body weight, is gonna be more than it was before, okay? Because on, on gravity, on Jupiter, your gravity is stronger, which means your body weight is gonna be a lot higher. So if our force is more, our body weight's more, and the distance is the same, then our overall amount of work that we're gonna do is also going to be more, okay? So we're gonna be doing more work 
on Jupiter to climb this staircase. And um, then will we generate more or less power? So if our work is more, okay? So if our work is more, but our power, our time stays the same, then our overall amount of power will be higher, okay? So basically we can say that um, if we are on Jupiter, if we are on, if we are on Jupiter, can't type, if we are on Jupiter, then our body weight or force would be much higher, which means that we would be doing a lot more work. If we are doing more work in the same amount of time, then our overall amount of power would be much higher than here on Earth. Okay, so there we go. All right, so hopefully that helps you understand how work and power work. And um, But of course, if you always have questions or need help on this, please let me know. All right, that is it for this lab. Make sure that you turn this into Schoology. And uh, yeah, that's it. So see you in the next one. Bye.